All right, temperature control of the testes. Just as we talked about, the temperature of the, the, the testes and ultimately the sperm should be maintained five degrees Celsius below the body temperature. Uh, an increase in this temperature causes cell abnormality or death. Uh, and ultimately, it's lower fertility. And so we see this sometimes when we get into, if you're trying to fertility test a bull and we've been a really hot summer and we've seen temperatures that have gone over 100, maybe 105 or plus here in Texas. And even with the temperature control mechanisms that are in place, um, those testicles may get above uh, what, what would be a normal temperature for them. And with that, then we see a lot more defects in those the sperm cells when we evaluate that under a scope uh, and a lot more that are just not surviving as well. Now, a lot of times those bulls, uh, after a period of rest and about 60 days of normal temperatures, uh, those bulls will recover and we will see a uh, normal sperm count, uh, motility as well as morphology. So some of the mechanisms for temperature regulation include one, scrotal skin, so it uh, will wrinkle when the darter's muscle contracts, uh, which means it would bring those, that scrotum closer to the body, which would ultimately increase the uh, temperature of the testicles and make the sperm temperature more ideal. Uh, the cremaster muscle can pull the testes closer to the body as well. So as you'll notice in bulls during the summer months, the testicles will be descended, whereas we get into the winter time, they'll be uh, uh, held more closely to the body wall, body wall there, the, 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 the belly line of that particular bull. Uh, the pampiniform plexus uh, is, is a network of blood vessels that will cool the blood going to the testicles. And so it's a network of blood vessels all around those, the, the actual testicle. And I like to relate it to something like the radiator in a car, uh, which is the same concept. You increase the surface area, uh, which in turn will increase the amount of, of heat that can be dissipated. And that's kind of what the pampiniform plexus does uh, for the testicles. Um, very important in temperature regulation. The reedy testes are the tubules that transfer, transport the spermatids from the seminiferous tubules to the epididymal uh, duct. The epididymis then does several things. One, it aids in the maturation of the sperm and serves as storage until it's needed. And there's three different segments. The head, which we also call the caput, and body, which is the corpus. Uh, and that's where we have our maturation and concentration of those sperm cells. Uh, the tail, uh, the cotta, which serves as a storage area for mature sperm. Uh, and it's located on the long axis of each of the testes. Uh, and so we'll show you kind of a diagram of that here. And so as you can see, the caput, which would be on the, the, uh, the top uh, or, or closer to, uh, closer to the uh, body cavity, if we're thinking about that. So it's on the top of the, the actual testicle. Uh, and then you can see the body or the corpus and then on the bottom of the testicle would be where the cotta or the tail is with that. And you can see on the picture on the right, uh, the actual uh, testicle there with the epididymis, which is running down kind of the side of those, uh, each of those testicles there. The deferent duct or the vas deferens transports the sperm from the epididymis uh, to the pelvic urethra, uh, which is in, gives in preparation for ejaculation. The spermatic cord composes of the deferent duct, the blood vessels, all the nerves. Uh, it also supports the that support the testes and also the cremaster muscle, which will raise and lower those testicles as a form of temperature regulation as well. The spermatic cord would be what we, when we're castrating uh, intact male calves, uh, the, the spermatic cord is the one that we would sever when we castrate them and make a steer out of them. Uh, here's a cross section of the testes and, and you can see the, uh, the, uh, the cells on the inside, the outside. You can see at the top of the one on the right uh, where we've got uh, the, the head of the epididymis and how it runs on the side of that. And then you can see all the vessels there, the blood flow that's going through there, the pampiniform plexus, which is a temperature regulation me uh, mechanism. 
The accessory glands do several things. Uh, the big thing is they add the fluid portion of the semen. Uh, the fascicular glands provide nutrients and buffering capacity to the semen. The prostate gland produces the thin watery fluid which cleanses that urethra prior to ejaculation and, and cleans out the urine and other, and other uh, substances that would be spermicidal. Uh, the bulbourethra glands or the Cowper's glands produce the gel portion of the semen which helps force that semen from the urethra at the ejaculation uh, on the bull. The pelvic urethra which is the passageway of the semen and urine and then finally the penis which is the organ of copulation uh, and the glands penis which is the terminating end of the penis that you that you would see exposed uh, it's a fibroelastic penis uh, and so the retractor penis muscle relaxes to allow the rigid penis to extend from the prepuce and again there's that S flexor in there uh, that allows us that when that retractor penis muscle relaxes that S flexor extends out um, at the same time, during se when we're, they're not uh, sexually stimulated, the, uh, the uh, retractor penis muscle will then contract to pull the penis back into the prepuce there. Uh, it's a very rapid copulation with low volume and high concentration, and the high concentration is something that's valuable from an artificial insemination perspective because uh, one ejaculate of, of a bull could give you anywhere from 50 to 200 actual straws of semen that could then in turn potentially uh, inseminate uh, 50 to 200 cows. Uh, the sheath, which is the outer skin containing the hair and wool, it also serves as a protection mechanism for the penis as well. So again, you can see just an overview of the parts that we just discussed. Uh, from the male reproductive tract or the anatomy of the uh, bull.